Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company. Today I have over 30 excellent Easter ideas. Let's get started. I picked up these sconces and as I was talking about them, realized they looked an awful lot like bunny ears. So I'm gonna put those together with my little wreath I picked up at Dollarama. If you haven't already figured it out, everything here is from Dollarama. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and cover this entire wreath with moss. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I am tired of moss. I love how the finished product looks. I don't even mind doing it. What I don't like is the mess and the burned fingers. Do you guys burn your fingers when you work with this too? I do. Every single time, no matter how many times I do it, no matter how many times I try to think of a better way to do it, I burn my fingers and my palms and my fingertips. It's just... It's working with moss. It's a good thing I like this darn stuff. See what I mean? The finished product is totally worth it. So I took the sconces out to the garage and cut the little candle holder part off. Isn't this neat? These were actually made in Canada. So I'm gonna get these propped up and of course going to do the same thing as before using a combination of E6000 and hot glue, but I gotta come up with a way for it to set up while it's setting up, if that makes any sense. So I'm using a whole bunch of things that I found around the studio, a couple of four by four blocks, a couple of spools of ribbon. You guys know how it is. We're just gonna go with DIY life, shall we? I used a combination of E6000 and hot glue to attach these. I'm all ready to start embellishing this bunny wreath. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know I love to dry brush finishes, but I am so happy. Look at that wood tone with the moss on the wreath. You know what? Just trust that mother nature most of the time knows exactly what she's doing. So I have these great little, oof, I don't know, pieces that I picked up at Dollarama and we're gonna use those on the top. The funniest thing is, once I have them on, cause I'm going for a nice simple look here, they look like whiskers. You tell me down in the comments below if you think these ended up looking like whiskers as much as I did. Now for a little something at the top. Maybe a burlap bow? Mm-mm, not that one. How about this striped one? Possible. Nope, too small and uh, not right for this one. And the winner is, yes, you can never go wrong with a black and white stripe. I think this guy needs a name. He's cute. I absolutely love this guy. I think he has so much personality and I am definitely gonna use him every Easter. love these metal serving trays you find in the party section at Dollar Tree and I love using my Rust-Oleum Modern Masters on them. So we did one of these back in the fall and I'm going to clip that in for you right here and this time we're going to make an egg out of one. Before I get started on the paint finish, I'm going to give it a really light, just a scuff sand, and then I'm going to give it a really light coat of black spray paint just to cover up as much of that silvery shine as I can before we get started with the paint finish. Now we can get started on the fun stuff. This Modern Master set from Rust-Oleum, which I actually picked up at my ReStore, has three parts to it. We're gonna do two coats of primer, and then when that is dry, we're gonna do two coats of the actual paint. Once the second coat of paint is on, we're gonna go right into the patina phase. Now, this is really fun. You wanna spray on your patina and a little bit of spray will give you a little bit patina and a whole bunch of spray will give you a whole bunch of patina. So I'm gonna let that sit and set up. 
To finish this off, I am going to make a really fun, messy bow with all of these ribbons, as well as a tiny bit of greenery. I'm just going to layer these up and the idea is just to make sure that you don't put the same ribbon in the same direction twice. So just have some fun with this, layering them up. I almost forgot to put in my four ply jute and I thought that would give it lots of texture. Now I'm just going to fold this all up and use a zip tie to hold it all together. Then I just went through and primped my bow, frayed some edges, opened up and unraveled that four ply jute and fishtailed all of the large ribbons to create a really big fluffy textured bow. I'm going to start with these really pretty ferns from Dollar Tree and attach them right to the plate, then put the bow on top, and then I'm just going to tuck in some of these really pretty spring flowers that I also got at Dollar Tree. To finish off the front and cover up that zip tie, I'm just going to keep putting in some tiny little bunches of those spring flowers from Dollar Tree. They're really cute little bunches and I actually took the leaves and slid them right up behind the flowers to make them feel really full. Now to make this stand up, because I don't want it to hang and I don't want to just lean it on something, I'm just going to use a few of the tumbling tower blocks and build up a little base with some hot glue here. I just attached it to the back to make sure I had it at just the right angle for it to stand up. I just love these patina kits. It's incredible how you can take something brand new from the dollar store and make it look like you pulled it out of a bin at a thrift store. The messy bow on top with the spring florals is just what this egg needed to make beautiful Easter decor. Now this one actually belongs in one of my super cheap, quick and easy videos cause that's what it is. It's a different kind of bunny. It's actually the one on that other tag printed out onto another one of the book pages from Pride and Prejudice. I'm going to go ahead and use my Dollar Tree glue stick. That is a canvas from an old pro uh, project and it's just black paint. It's not chalkboard. It's literally just flat black paint. I don't even remember what I used it for, but I told you guys I'm trying to use stuff from my stash and so far success. Now I've got that stuck down and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of antiquing wax and that's a dollar, uh, dollar Tree diaper wipe again because I find it really helps move it around. I just saw someone do this on their video and I apologize because I can't remember who it was and I totally want to give them credit but using the diaper wipe is a genius move because it stops it from just sticking and staying there. The moisture on the wipe just keeps that wax moving. And isn't he cute? I almost feel like some of these cute vintage bunnies need like cute vintage names. What do you think? Tell me down in the comments what we should name these guys. I'm just going to pry off a couple of extra pieces on here and of course I'm going to save them because 
you never know. I'm gonna scrape him down a little bit and I am gonna go around the edges because the paper sort of hangs over a little bit and I'm just gonna sand that off. Now, I'm gonna be using the Dollar Tree contact paper. I have never used this beautiful black and white contact paper and I have no idea why because you guys know my love of black and white. So this doesn't really have a pattern direction so I'm going to use it sideways. I'm going to use those lines on the back to cut off what I need and this is so easy. I'm just going to start peeling the backing off this at the top and very slowly and carefully work my way down. Then I'm going to take an X-Acto knife with a nice sharp blade and just start trimming around the edge. And again, this is one of those slow and careful moments. I don't want to cut the sign because, well, you're going to have to wait and see why, but I want to get a nice clean edge on this. So I'm just slowly going around and working my way through all of those different sections. If this beauty doesn't scream farmhouse, then I don't know what does. And what more could she possibly need but a beautiful black and white buffalo plaid bow. Now guys, I am not a big bow person and I am not a bow making expert. There's lots of good tutorials out there for that, but I ended up making a six loop bow and I'm just using a tiny piece of twine to tie it together. And then I'm gonna glue it on. I happen to have, and actually from Dollar Tree, the most beautiful white peony, and I'm gonna put that right in the middle. Now I know it's a little early for peonies, but oh my goodness, they're my favorite flower and I could not resist. Now, I've always been honest with you guys and shared my fails, and you're about to see one coming up. It's not obvious at the moment, but when we go to finish this off, you're gonna see exactly why it was a fail. really hard time picking a favorite. And now it's time for my bonus bunny. I'm using the wood grain contact paper to do the other side of this sign. Now, the fail, you say? Um, yeah, I should not have attached that bow until I was finished. Other than that, the process is exactly the same for this guy. What I did do though, I made sure that the wood grain was going from top to bottom before I attached it. I think a sideways wood grain on this one would have looked a bit funny. Now, on this bunny, he definitely needed a twine tail. And better yet, I decided to unravel the four ply twine to make him an extra fluffy tail. I'm just loving my bonus bunny. Now this dollar store bunny was supposed to be my favorite and easiest project. I picked him up at Dollarama and all I was gonna do was Mod Podge him with book pages. Well, a couple of things happened here. Um, this paper turned out to be a little bit better quality than I expected it to be, and putting it on the bunny and making it bend to the shape was just not working well. So I ended up doing a couple of different things to make it work. Now, especially when I was getting up near his face and around his ears, there was no way, no matter how small the pieces were, that it was working. So I decided that if I wet the paper, it might make it softer and more malleable and easier to use. So I took Izzy's mister, 
how cute is that, that she uses for her plants because I thought that would put down a nice even spray on the paper without soaking it but making it nice and damp and hopefully working better with the Mod Podge. And it did. And I was trying to remember all those years I Mod Podged things with my mom, what was different. And I think the bottom line is we just always used thin tissue-like paper and thin materials. My mom was so into Mod Podge for a while. She's going to kill me for telling you guys this story, but she Mod Podged everything. We got ornaments for Christmas. I had a picture frame that she made me and she'd used like cutouts from magazines. She was like the Mod Podge queen. Sorry, mom. Anyway, back on track, it worked. When I was finished, I gave the entire bunny one more coat of Mod Podge so that it would even everything out and hold them all together. Now check him out. All I did was place him in a pedestal ball, wow, pedestal bowl with a whole bunch of these moss balls from Dollar Tree. Have you guys seen them? Do you know, think of all the times we burned our fingers making moss balls and now we can buy them for a buck 25. You guys know I love a good trash to treasure and we just made chili so we had a lot of cans so I painted this one black I didn't bother to show you because come on you've seen me paint things before now I'm gonna cut out from one of my book pages and I just had that oval shape kicking around in my stash so I used that to do that cut out another bunny but I actually thought I would show you how I did it this time and how well the teeny tiny dollar store scissors work I used my glue stick to put him on and now I'm going to Mod Podge him right onto my can. Now the can is painted with my homemade chalk paint that I'm still using and that's from several videos ago. Uh, put a little Mod Podge on the back here, put him on the can and I only had one issue with it. There was one place where I was holding the can that some of that paint came off on my thumb. Now, to be fair, I really hadn't let the paint cure very long. I hit it with my hair dryer because I really wanted to get this done. So I put a pretty generous coat of Mod Podge on it to help soften up the paper. And then you'll see I use my finger to really make it sit down in the ridges on the can. I thought it would look way better if it was kind of had that wavy texture to it. You can see there. And then what I did off camera was put an entire coat of Mod Podge on the entire can just to make sure I was sealing in that chalk paint and that this would stand the test of time. Now, I don't know you guys, is he a Cecil or a Basil? Don't say Peter, that's too obvious. But I feel like these dudes need names. At work, we just replaced all our old iPhones with, well, pretty much the same iPhone, but that's okay because I managed to get my hands on a whole bunch of these boxes. And if you've never seen an iPhone box up close and personal, they are super strong and sturdy. So I'm gonna give these a coat of my favorite spray paint this season, and that is River Mist from Home Hardware. And I'm just gonna give this a quick coat and then we're gonna move on to the next step. This is all ready for a little something to make it Easter friendly from my Cricut. So all I'm going to do is use this, I cut it out, chilling with peeps. Here's a tip for you guys that I always, always forget. When you're using a skinny, tiny font, make sure it's not too skinny or too tiny because I don't know about you, but when I go to weed it off of the mat, I always at least lose one letter or completely mangle one. So. Pro tip or amateur tip, you can decide which one that one is today. So I'm using my transfer tape to put this on top and believe it or not, you guys, this is pretty much the end of this project. We're gonna put this box back together and we're gonna stage it up for Easter. This one is a great Cadbury chocolate tin left over from the holidays. And believe it or not, I pulled this out of the recycling at work because seriously, it's a great hinged tin and I can think of about half a dozen things I could do with this. 
But today I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. It's getting a coat of that same spray paint. I did tell you guys I had fallen head over heels in love with it, and it was going to form the backdrop of my Easter decor this year. I'm gonna link the video up here and down below for you where we used this on our tiered tray decor because it came out great and you don't wanna miss that video. Remember, anytime you're using spray paint, you are better off to do many thin coats than one heavy coat. If you try a heavy coat, you're gonna end up with a lot of drips. With the tin all painted, dried, and ready to go, I'm just gonna pop some of this floral foam in it I didn't even buy this floral foam. This was left over from another project. You can see it already has some holes up there in it. I'm gonna cut that foam to fit, put some Spanish moss on top, and start popping these beautiful hydrangeas in. I decided with this moss just to let it sit on top rather than glue it down. This way, if I decide to reuse any of these components, I'll be able to take it apart easily. And I find usually the flowers do a pretty good job of holding it all together. I'm gonna use these white hydrangeas. They're already cut off the bunches, but I'm gonna trim them a little bit shorter. I like to make sure I leave the leaves right on the stems and I push them right up by the flowers. I find with the inexpensive flowers, this makes them look a little bit fuller and well, just a little bit nicer. my very first Easter DIYs and this time using trash to create treasure. And I am loving this color. I know I've said it before, pretty sure I've said it several times, but absolutely in love with this color for spring and Easter. Before we can get started with these guys, we gotta trim a whole bunch of stuff off. They've got whiskers and stakes and there's a tail kind of off to the side, which between you and me seems like a strange place for a bunny tail. I am just using my tin snips to get these guys off. It did create a couple of sharp edges, but I just gave them another trim where I could or I used the rough side of my sanding block to fix it up if that didn't work. Okay, so bunny number one is going to require a whole bunch of these gigantic popsicle sticks, craft sticks, whatever you wanna call them. So I am gonna do these in four different colors, but I'm not gonna paint them. I wanna create more of a stained finish. So I'm gonna water each of those down. First thing I'm gonna do though, I've laid these out to see how many popsicle sticks I need approximately, and I'm gonna divide them into four little piles and go ahead and stain away. Now, because I'm a little on the impatient side, I tried to use my hair dryer to make these dry faster. And oh, oh my goodness, you wanna see some craft sticks fly. Once I had them all back together and once they were actually dry, I went through and trimmed off all the little edges and then trimmed them into different lengths. I wanted these to be irregular, almost like I had taken a whole bunch of pallet wood, cause that's what I'm calling this bunny, a whole bunch of pallet wood, stained it and created a really cool piece of home decor. Now, if you've ever tried to do something and make it look random, you know as well as I do that that means you have to work extra hard to make it look random. Are you following? So I'm gonna go through and just carefully lay out all the different sticks in different colors and really try to create something where I don't have too much repetition and all that fun stuff. So watch as I randomly, air quotes, put all these pieces down and then we're gonna glue these down and get done with this bunny. All right, to glue these down, I'm gonna use my fine tip shore bonder glue gun that Izzy gave me for Christmas. You guys, I love this one so much. The good thing is because this bunny is a grid, I can go ahead and just put a few dots down and get that stick down quickly. I don't want my glue to dry. Then one by one, we are just gonna get through these from bottom to top and we are gonna have one seriously cute bunny when we're done. Thank you. 
And once all those pieces are glued down, I'm gonna flip this guy over, take my regular glue gun and put a pretty good chunk of glue on the back of that to make sure those pieces are well stuck down. Now, I did get a little bit bleed through of the glue coming through the back, but we're just gonna scrape that off and try not to do any damage to our stained finish. I have a pair of I don't know, some would call these like kitchen scissors. I've always referred to them as trauma shears. I got them from a nurse and they seemed like the best thing to trim off all these extra pieces. Now, I could not think of a better way to put these pieces down. I think trying to cut each individual piece to match, woo, match these curves would have been awful. So I decided to go about it this way, but if you guys had a better idea, head down to those comments and let me know how you would have tackled this. Now, remember I told you guys you need to be following me over on Instagram. Hop on over there. It's Lisa and Company DIY. Make sure you follow us because you would have seen the Studio of Shame before I started working on it. Well, it's no secret that every bunny needs a fuzzy tail. And I have this ball of wool I have used for about a million projects on this channel. And I am just gonna make him a really fluffy tail. I totally forgot how many. I think I just kept wrapping until I was losing the feeling in my fingers. Then I simply tied a piece, another piece around the middle, trimmed the edges, gave him a little bit of a haircut and stuck him right on. I love how fuzzy this tail was. I looked at a whole bunch of different yarns that I had. I even looked at them in different colors, but I decided ultimately this dude needed just a classic white tail. I'm pretty sure I have referred to this bunny as he about four times, but somewhere along the way, I decided that he was she and needed this really cute little paper flower up on her ear. I just thought the juxtaposition of the palette wood and the flower was really cute. So what do you think? I ended up going back and giving this pallet wood bunny a little bit of a dry brush and some white paint and oh my goodness, I love her. Here is my pro tip for this one. Make sure you put this together in a place where it can sit and cure overnight. I'm doing this on the dining room table so that I can leave it here without touching it so my E6000 can set up really well. First things first, I took my bunnies and my plate and I just wanted to line them up to figure exactly where I needed to put the glue. Then I put some E6000 on each one of his cute little paws, added a little bit of hot glue just so I could have that instant hold and placed the plate very carefully on there. I did go ahead and hold it for probably about 20 seconds just to make sure that hot glue had cooled down and grabbed tight so I could move to the other side. After I was certain the one side was ready to go, I moved to the other side and I tried to use the lines of that buffalo plaid on the plate to make sure I got my bunnies right across from each other. Now, I think this plate would have been super cute with three of these bunnies, but I only had two, so I was working with what I got. And remember, this cost me zero dollars, my absolute favorite kind of DIY. A few Easter treats like these awesome vanilla cupcakes. No, I didn't make them. This is a DIY channel, not a baking channel. And of course, a few Cadbury mini eggs, but really you could put whatever you wanted on this and have a beautiful Easter side serving dish. I hope you like this one, you guys. Very few supplies needed for this one. I have my bunny hanger and a whole bunch of greenery I picked up at Dollarama. But that bunny is not to my taste, cute as she is. So I'm going to get rid of all that pink stuff and I am going to load this down with greenery. Now I can't stress that part enough. So this one I lucked out because it's got a beautiful spring-like feel to it. I'm going to take it completely apart so I have all these small pieces. 
You could probably just wire it on as one, but I wanted to really control where my greenery was and how heavy I could pile it in there. I did a couple of things here. I used the wire stems and really tucked them into the grapevine, but this one was really tight. So there were places where that was tough to do. So I added glue to both the places where I could tuck it in and the ones where I couldn't. The only thing was it did mean that there was a couple of places I added a little bit of wire and the places where I had to add a whole bunch of hot glue, well, those finger protectors come in so handy. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but they are pretty much always on my work surface now. I can't believe that a year ago, I used to just touch the hot glue. Like, what was I thinking? I did decide after I had loaded it all up that I wanted to leave the ears the way they were. I liked the relief it sort of added to the greenery on the bunny. However, this bunny needed a bow and you guys know I am not huge on bows, but I felt like in this one, it was definitely required. So I have this polka dot burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. I bought a ton of it when I saw it late summer, early fall, and I haven't used very much of it, because I'm one of those weirdo craft hoarders that when I have something I love, I don't use it. Do you guys do that? Tell me down in the comments if you're guilty of hoarding your favorite craft supplies. Now this is a super simple bow, two separate loops tied together with some twine and then tied around the back. I'm not a fancy bow maker. There are some amazing bow makers out there on YouTube. Go check them out. You will learn how to make great bows. Now I happen to think that this cute bunny and her bow need a flower. So I have this bin of leftover bits and pieces that I just throw in here. Okay, truth be told, it's actually like a paper bag folded down. So I went through and I tried a rose, I tried a tulip, I tried a couple of different things, and it turned out that the ranunculus was the winner. Now when I put it on, I actually take it apart. So I do the leaf and then the flower and I cut them apart and make sure you cut that tiny little nub off the back and it makes it sit much flatter. Glue them down and this bunny is done. I just love this bunny. It's one of those DIYs I've wanted to make for quite some time and I'm going to take her and hang her right in the kitchen for the holidays. Hey guys, we are making a magnolia wreath. We've all seen them and I think we all love them and I was determined that I could do this on my own. So I was kind of excited to try it with some book pages. Now I've cut out a ton. I just kind of guessed at the size. There was no science involved here. Um, and I'm using an old copy of Pride and Prejudice I picked up at my restore because I liked that the pages were already a little bit yellowed and there was not gonna be anything offensive there with Wickham and Mr. Darcy. I did decide to cover my wreath so that none of that green would show through and oh my goodness it's a good thing I sped this up because that took way too long. Now I decided that my magnolia leaves were a little flat and non-dimensional so I scrunched them. Yes I there's no better way to describe what I did. I scrunched them. I just gently squeezed them in my hands to try and give them a little bit of dimension.
So I did have my inspiration pick just above me so I could kind of see how to put these on. And of course it was the actual Magnolia, as in the silos, as in Fixer Upper, as in Chip and Joanna. And that was my inspiration while I was working on this. So I worked my way all the way around the wreath and I just wasn't happy with it. It just lacked something. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I actually thought of leaving it, but I wanted this to be great, so I ripped it apart. Now, I'm gonna show you my inspiration so you can see why I was looking for something with a bit more dimension, and this really helped me figure out what I was doing wrong. Now, check out the price of this baby. And remember that that price is in US dollars, so in Canada, I'm gonna pay a lot more for that, and I'm gonna pay a whole bunch for shipping. The first thing I did was I trimmed one side of the leaves down so that the leaves were a bit narrower. Then I scored them down the middle just with my fingers and folded up the end. And I was hoping that this would help them sit up a little bit. So I just went through and I did that with all of them. And you can just see how much smaller the leaf is. And this was a result. It was the result that I was looking for. Check this out. started putting these on and you can see as well as I did that this is so much better. Are you loving it? Doesn't it look like the real deal? I am thinking of so many different ways I could do this. I am thinking of so many different ways I can use a magnolia wreath. So I popped in a popsicle stick. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Um, because I am gonna add another small element to this and I needed a little bracing across the back there because it wouldn't show otherwise. I'm painting my little bunny from the dollar store and I'm gonna go back and I'm going to wet distress him. So when the paint is dry to the touch, I'm actually using a baby wipe. I keep these on hand so I can clean my hands off when I'm working in here. And I'm just going to rub off so we can see some of the details. This is one of those moments where I rubbed off a tiny bit and I was like, okay, I'm done. And I was like, mm, maybe just a little bit more detail. And I did that and I was like, okay, I'm done. And then I flipped him over and did the other side and I got a little carried away and it was like, ooh, I like the way he looks now. So we used that side. Now to cover my popsicle stick, cause it is gonna show a little bit, I'm gonna use some of this moss tape from the Dollar Tree. It's not terribly sticky, so I'm gonna use my glue gun to put it down. And that's gonna give my bunny a nice place to hang out in my magnolia wreath. And I'm thinking I can change this out and put so many different things in there throughout the course of the year. Isn't that gonna be fun? Now, once I had my bunny in there, he looked lonely and just not quite right, if that makes any sense. So I had some of these moss stones from Dollar Tree and I added them in there. I don't know if you caught that, but I filled one of those moss stones with hot glue and dropped it on my hand. There were bad words, I guarantee it. Now look at my magnolia wreath with my cute little bunny. I absolutely love it this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to hang it in my kitchen window because I think it's going to be perfect. I have these gigantic golden eggs I picked up at Dollarama and a whole pile of messy moss. There's no other way to describe this stuff. I am going to cover this with hot glue, burn my fingers multiple times while I put all the moss on, and I'm going to give them a haircut as I go. These look really good as long as you trim the moss so it looks really tight to the egg or the ball, whatever it is you're working on. I'm going to pop these on to a couple of white candlesticks and this DIY is done. But just like these eggs on their candlesticks, just like my family of bunnies, just like the eggs sitting on the tray, I'm
So when I was scouring our local Dollaramas for more of these bunnies, I found these adhesive sheets of AstroTurf. I don't know what made me think it would make a cute bunny, but I did, and I am so excited to make this one. Now we do a lot of things with moss on this channel and in YouTube in general, but the AstroTurf just has some kind of weird, quirky, retro quality. So I'm kind of excited for this. Now I was even more excited because I bought two sheets of this and there was no more that I managed to get the entire bunny cut out of the one sheet, which means you guys are going to see another DIY with the AstroTurf somewhere on it. Once I had this all traced out, I just cut it out with a regular pair of scissors. And the best part is because it's adhesive, I'm going to be able to peel it off and stick it right on. So here's what I will tell you. Number one, it was messy. Just like working with moss, when I cut it out, it sheds for lack of a better word, and it kind of goes everywhere. So if I was to do this again, or when I do this again, I would do it over a container, just so that, well, it's all over the floor in the studio now, right? It's like two steps forward and one step backwards. But let me tell you, totally worth it for this bunny. Now this stuff was super sticky and it wasn't until afterwards that I thought, you know, this is probably meant to be used outside. So it's got a really good outdoor worthy adhesive on it. Well, I had black adhesive all over my hands. No biggie, I did manage to get it all off, but as I was working with it, my fingers were sticking to everything. Little bits of the AstroTurf were sticking to my fingers. It was actually quite comical. And if you could hear what was going on, there may have been a couple of bad words, but mostly there was hysterical laughter. Once I had that attached, I pressed it down on the reverse and I did exactly the same thing with my full size glue gun. I just went along all the way around the perimeter and a few places down the middle to make sure it was really well stuck down. I didn't want these edges peeling back in a couple of Easter's from now because I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep this one around for quite some time. Somehow from the very moment I decided to use this AstroTurf, I knew this was going to be a pretty bunny. I have a actually paper bag full of tiny little bits of greenery left over from other projects or just pieces that have come off projects over time. So I gathered these together. I think there's three different kinds of greenery, a few different kinds of flowers, and I just sort of put it on off center more off to one ear than the other and I just love the way it looks she is so pretty just watch and see how she comes together I wanted to do something different for the tail on this one. Fuzzy just didn't seem like the right way to go. So I actually used one of the dollar store eggs and cut it in half. She may be the prettiest little Easter bunny I ever did make. Up next, I have these cute little Dollarama bunnies 
They were $2 each and I have a really great idea for them. Initially, I wanted to cover them with moss and basically make them into bunny topiaries, but I've kind of had my fill of moss today by the time I'm finished one of the other DIYs. So I have three colors of green paint and I'm going to stipple this on so I kind of get that moss effect. Then while I'm sitting here talking to you guys, I'm going, really? Green bunnies? I'm not so sure about this. So I remembered I had this great pearly gloss white paint. I love this brand of spray paint. The sprayer is just superior to any of the other brands. And I picked this one up at the Restore. So we're gonna head down to the basement and get these painted. Once my beautiful baby bunnies are dry, it's time to head back to the studio and get these dowels attached. Now, I am gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue, but I was really struggling with how I was going to get these to sit while I got that to set up. You're not gonna believe it, but I literally flipped them over and they sit flat between the back and the ears. It's like this was meant to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little of the E6000 right on the end of the dowel and then a whole pile of hot glue so that I'm hoping as I slide it in there, the hot glue will slide down and make contact with the inside of the bunny. Then I'm gonna go a little crazy and squeeze a pile of hot glue into that cavity and a little around the edge and fingers crossed, that will make it stick after that hot glue sets up. With the hot glue all set up, I'm gonna pop my bunny topiaries into these great galvanized pots, cover the foam with some moss, and then I'm gonna just decorate up the top. I have this great little vine I picked up also at Dollarama. I'm gonna put that around their little necks. I'm gonna add a really pretty rose and a leaf, and these guys are all set. Since I seem to be missing a little bit of footage there, I'm going to give you a close up and see how cute this bunny looks with his vine, his rose, and his leaf. I am using a couple of the Dollar Tree square canvases and we're going to take them completely apart. Now for some reason I've never done this and so many of my friends on YouTube have done it and I love the look. So I thought, what the heck? I literally have a drawer full of these. I kid you not, a drawer. So I am going to first just cut the canvas off the frame. Then we're gonna get rid of those staples and then we're gonna use these to DIY. Or so I thought. Cutting off the canvas, no problem, went really well. Managed not to cut off any of my fingers, which I thought was fairly impressive. However, I don't know if it was the batch that was made this day. I don't know if it was the square ones, but these staples were so far into the fabric, sorry, into the frame, I couldn't get them out. I ended up trying a whole bunch of different tools. The only thing that even remotely worked was a flathead screwdriver and it gouged the wood. There is no other way to describe it. I had to dig them out. But you guys, I was invested at this point and I was so getting this done. These frames also had some holes uh, that maybe the rectangular ones don't. I don't remember seeing those. But like I said, invested man. We were finishing this DIY. We were just gonna come up with a slightly different way to do it. So what are we doing differently? Well, we're only gonna use one of the frames naked. The other one I damaged way too much. And I'm gonna place it on top of an untorn apart canvas frame. I'm gonna take this bunny and this little guy is traced from one of the DIYs from my last video. I'll make sure I link that below because that one had like 20 plus DIYs. Yes, it did. I'm gonna cut those out. Super simple. This is a simple bunny. You can trace any bunny you've got. <laughs> any bunny, that's so cute. You can trace any bunny, whatever works for your frame or whatever it is you're using. Because remember, we're DIYing these babies from our stash, working on the assumption that we can't get any Easter stuff at our favorite dollar stores. 
Once these guys are cut out, I'm gonna use my fine tip glue gun and I'm doing that because I want a really small edge on them. I'm gonna put them wrong sides together and I'm gonna glue in very small sections. I'm doing that because I don't want the glue to dry out while I'm waiting for that piece to come down and I wanna get a really good hold I want to get a really good bond with these bunnies because we're going to stuff them and make them super cute. Yo, I am using Dollar Tree bags to stuff my bunny because they are thin like tissue now and I figured they were absolutely perfect. I was surprised I actually managed to get one entire bag into that bunny. I'm going to use my antiquing wax on that frame and then I'm going to go back with a diaper wipe and get it really sort of worked in there and then what's left on my brush I'm just going to use on the edges of the bunny gonna stick him down and then I just want a little something else so I have this super cute ribbon from Dollar Tree it's kind of that ticking stripe grain stripe wish I had bought more of it it's one of those lessons we should all know by now if you see something you love at Dollar Tree buy a whole bunch of them don't buy one or two because chances are you're gonna use it all up <clears throat> unless you hoard it which I may have done with this in the early days and you're gonna wish you had more bottom line, you're gonna wish you had more. Time to glue that frame back down. So a little hot glue on the top and the bottom. I didn't want any squeezing out anywhere and I just plunked it right down on top. Now you will remember that I told you I carved up that frame pretty bad to get the staples out. So it's gonna need a little something. And obviously with the white one, it really needed something. So I had this cute burlap ribbon from Dollarama that had a really pretty white edge on it. And it was perfect for going all the way around the edge and just finishing it off so it looked really pretty. Now this guy is simple and super easy to make from your stash, so there is no excuse not to have at least a little bit of Easter decor in your home. On a table in the studio, rapidly running out of room, we are gonna do probably the simplest DIY as part of this. This is actually a little wall shelf I picked up at Dollarama. I needed something exactly this size and it was the only thing after going around and around and around that would fit. I also had this great moss tape, which I had never seen before. And we are literally just going to glue on some pieces and then put the eggs on top. I told you guys this was simple. One thing I will tell you about this roll of moss, it smells terrible. I don't know if it's something that they use to dye it. I'm not sure if it was just from being trapped in a plastic bag, but it is awful. I will admit that after it had been out for a while, it was better, but as I was working with it here, Pungent, that's the word we'll go with today. And now for the reason I was looking for just something. These beautiful white ceramic pearly eggs, only $2 each, and I wanted just the perfect setting for them. I am going to glue them down. I don't know how well it will stick. I'm just concerned about them getting knocked over, especially because they're going to be in such a high traffic area. I am absolutely thrilled with this. So this entire thing cost me $8 nine dollars and i love it to me this looks like great high-end design or at least something that you would pick up at home sense
Next up, it's the big bunnies, and I'm gonna go through and prep them all first. I did scrape off all the little details on them. Some of them came off better than others. They do need to be sanded because they are a little rough. These napkin DIYs. Nothing you haven't seen here before, a nice, light, even coat of Mod Podge. I'm gonna place my napkin on top and then do another coat of Mod Podge over that and do the same, tear away at the edges and go back with my nail file at the end. You guys, this system really works out well for me. I find trying to trim it with any other implement just tears at the tissue paper. A Little bit different if you have a thicker medium you're working with and stay tuned, cause we're absolutely doing that. Now the other side of my bunny, I am leaving plain blue and I took one of the carrots that was actually on these bunnies, put a little bit of the nap. For my blue bunny, I am using this gingham napkin from the dollar store. I believe I've used these ones before. I'm gonna check back because I think when we did our blue and white collab in the fall, we used these napkins. Of course, this is for my mom and anything blue and white will do. I just put a thin coat, a very even thin coat of Mod Podge on here. I'm gonna spread the napkin very, very gently with my fingers, and then I'm gonna do the top coat, concentrating on the edges so that I can just tear away the napkin. Now, when it's dry, afterwards, and I'm gonna give it probably an hour or so, I'm just gonna go back with a nail file and clean up the edges. Now for the other side of this bunny, I have left him completely white, but I'm gonna make a really cute small bow out of my blue and white baker's twine from Dollar Tree, just by wrapping it around my fingers a few times and leaving a couple of tails. Carrots are getting the blue and white Dollar Tree twine treatment. They came out really, really well. The only thing I would say is I might have painted them underneath. The second one is getting the white Dollar Tree twine and the third one is going to get Mod Podged with that beautiful toile napkin. Now that one, I was smart enough to go ahead and paint underneath and it made a huge difference. So I gave it a really good coat of the white chalked paint, let that dry, and then Mod Podged the blue and white napkin. So I had kind of a happy accident when I painted these eggs as well. I needed to do them outside and I kind of put them in the tray and rolled them around while I sprayed them and it created this really cool modeled look on a whole bunch of the eggs so I am going to work with that I actually love it and of course what are the chances that I'd be able to recreate that anyway the first eggs are getting another one of those beautiful napkins and you can see how we are creating sets of decor here. So I'm gonna do three like that. I'm gonna leave three with the modeled finish, but I'm gonna give those ones just a little something in terms of embellishment. I've had so much fun with the button bag that I couldn't really leave it out on these ones, right? But before I do that, I am gonna speckle them just a tiny bit. I didn't go crazy on these ones and I my paint was a little bit thicker than the last time but I was trying to not get it everywhere and not have to hang the big old plastic sheet to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Now that these guys are dry, it's time for a little bit of embellishment. My first one is going to get a little bit of the blue and white baker's twine and then one of these really pretty, almost Easter dress type white buttons that I found in the button bag. Oh my goodness, I'm having so much fun with these. And you know what the crazy thing is? Half these buttons have never been used before. This one, I love the way the speckle and that mottled paint came out. So this one's just getting a button. And the last one is getting a little bit of the white twine with a button right on it. And again, I hope you can see how these sets are starting to come together. And I hope you're getting excited for the reveal where we put all these sets together. For my blue and white ones, well, I know my mom is gonna love these ones. Something tells me she might be putting in a request for some more eggs, we'll see. But that look number one, I'm in love with, and in the other side, I just love how simple it is, and I love that I was able to use the leftover carrot from the original bunny. So you guys know I love farmhouse books and I just discovered that these old romance novels are even cheaper at the thrift store. So I grabbed myself a bunch of these because I just wanted a cute stack to use for Easter. Now because the covers are a little bit mm, terrifying and very bright, I ripped them all off and I'm using a little bit of the Dollar Tree burlap just to cover the spine. So you know, I've got that kind of cute farmhouse look. I have this wide burlap unwired ribbon I actually got at the thrift store and I think it's absolutely perfect for what I wanna do here. I am gonna wrap it all the way around the books, but before I do that, I am gonna fray those edges good. I think it's really gonna to add to the look that we have going here. So we'll trim that off, get it all glued down, and then I have some really cute and a little bit different idea for this stack of books. Hey, you guys, don't forget to follow us over on Instagram and Facebook. That's at Lisa and Company, and you're going to see all kinds of weird stuff. I don't do haul videos, but I like to show little hauls. So I have this really cute ticking stripe ribbon from Dollar Tree, of course, and I'm going to wrap that twice around, but not in a messy twice around. I want to create two bands on here because you can see those really pretty wooden buttons. I'm going to use those. Now you guys, those buttons are from my mom's button bag. Those buttons are probably almost as old as I am, and I'm stopping there. We're not talking about how old those buttons actually are. I've told you what I'm going to tell you, but I'm pretty sure based on the label and the font and the discoloration on that card that, yeah, those buttons are old.
Now you guys have fun with this. Use whatever you have, use whatever suits you. I had this one uh, greenery bush from Dollar Tree and I used a really small amount of it because I didn't want to overwhelm this smaller stack of books, but I really felt like it needed something. If you've been following along here for a while, you know I'm not a really big bow person. I didn't want to put twine on it. I kind of went back and forth and I just loved the sort of grayed out leaf on this and then the two different styles of leaf with that little bit of yellow tint on there. Totally love it, but use what you've got, use what's in your stash and use what suits you. Now I wanted to make a tag for this and I had taken out some little wooden letters to spell out Easter, but looking at this little farmhouse stack, I thought, you know what, this is going to work in the fall, this could work at Christmas, and I didn't want to make it too specific. So we kiboshed the Easter letters, and I'm just going to take one of my printed out little tiny vintage bunnies and use that. Now you guys, these are such a pain to cut out, but you know what, they are totally worth it. I have these teeny tiny little scissors from Dollar Tree and it's not too, too bad. However, I'm not going to show you how I cut it out because I like you guys more than that. Once I had them cut out and I did a really close trim job, I'm using my Dollar Tree glue stick. Then I did some antiquing wax and I think this looks really pretty all done. And now that you guys can see it up close, you know what I mean, right? We could use this so many other times of the year. Now, my neutral bunny, yes, we are playing with the book pages again. And again, guys, if you didn't see the video with the book page, Vintage Bunnies, go and watch it. It is absolutely one of my favorites, and I think it is for you guys too. So I'm just tearing up a few more pages of Pride and Prejudice. I used this book so that I wouldn't have anything untowards on the Mod Podge, if you know what I mean. I know some of you do, because you mentioned it in the comments on the last one. And yes, that is exactly why I used Pride and Prejudice. Nothing offensive here. We're gonna Mod Podge those pages on, and then the other side of this bunny is getting the coolest treatment. Now when this is all dry, all I will do is flip it over and trim those extra book pages off. Again, I find it so much easier to use a, oh my goodness, a sharp X-Acto knife to trim this off once it's dry. For the other side, I used washi tape on a diagonal stripe and then a makeup sponge to sponge on some white acrylic paint. Again, this one goes really, really well with that little polka dot one and I'm sure it was a dupe from last year's Easter stuff at Kirkland's. For my neutral bunny, I saw this last year on YouTube. I want to say it came from Kirkland's or something like that in the States, and I've wanted to create him ever since. So when I saw these little guys at the dollar store, I knew they were perfect for what I wanted to do. All I'm doing is a tiny little bit of white paint on the end of a flat and new unused eraser, otherwise it's going to be all misshapen, and I am randomly dotting them all over my bunny. I made sure I took a couple over the edge Edge so they weren't all in the center of the bunny and I think this one came out super cute. Now it's time for our set of neutral carrots and first up we are going to Mod Podge, yep you guessed it, one of the Pride and Prejudice book pages right onto our carrot. So I had already trimmed up a piece so it was kind of a 
partial cylinder so I could roll my carrot in it. Just added a little bit of Mod Podge on the top and the bottom, kind of squeezed it a little bit to make it conform to the carrot shape, and this one was done. I have to tell you, Mod Podging these carrots is A, fun, B, quick, and oh my goodness, I need to do more like this. I need to go find like a whole bunch of napkins and well, I'm gonna have to find a whole bunch of carrots first if I wanna do that. is getting the twine treatment and no rocket science here. I've put a dab of glue at the bottom, waited till it had cooled down, and then I am just going to wrap with this thicker four ply twine. Every once in a while, I put a dab of glue just to make sure that it would stay in place. And when I got to the top, I finished it off with a kind of a bit more glue and tucked the end right in. I am glad I used the thicker twine. The thin one is so hard to wrap around these and I love that chunky textural look that it has. Since you guys enjoyed those Jenga block DIYs so much, I figured we could probably make a carrot. So I messed around with it and that's all you have to do with these Jenga blocks until I had what I felt like was a good shape for a carrot. And I definitely slowed this one down so you could get a better idea of what it looked like. I'm just gonna use a little tiny bit of hot glue to put these together. I'm not worried, it's not gonna take any abuse. So I didn't bother breaking out the wood glue for this one. Once I had it all stacked up and assembled, I'm going to give it a little bit of that watered down paint that I have left over. I'm gonna use one of those Dollar Tree diaper wipes to rub it all in, cause I really wanna see the wood grain, but I really wanted it to have a lighter springy Easter look. Of course, it wouldn't be a carrot without some greenery at the top, and I just decided to take a little bit of that four-ply twine, wrap it around, just to make it a little bit thicker and more substantial so I could glue it to the top of these. The other option would have been to get out the drill and drill a little hole into the wood blocks and tuck the greenery right in. Now, my kids are beyond this, and I may be dating myself, but I feel like this looks like a Minecraft carrot. Minecraft, not Minecraft. Minecraft carrot. Thoughts, anyone? There, it's time to finish off our neutral eggs. I have one left of these vintage bunny printouts from a couple of videos ago. So I am going to Mod Podge this with book pages, add that little vintage bunny, and this one's gonna be done really quick. Really messy, really sticky fingers, but really quick. This one is getting wrapped with that four ply twine and I just love how chunky it is. I may actually add a couple more of these cause I'm really enjoying how they came out. I am gonna give it a button at the end just like I've given a whole bunch of these. And somewhere along the way, that last egg that you can see sitting there in the tray, well that one just got a little twine around his middle and a matching button, but I have no idea what happened to the footage for those. I am loving this neutral set. These go along so well with the vintage black and white bunnies I did a few videos back. I just love, again, the textures that came together here. For the last large bunny, the one side is black and the other side I am using one of these Dollar Tree tea towels. Now this is what I was talking about with using something thicker to Mod Podge. I am going to trim this off and figure out exactly where I want that 
plaid crossover stripe to sit on my bunny and then I'm going to put down a thick, a much thicker coat of Mod Podge because it's got to soak right through that fabric and hold it onto the bunny. Once it's done, I will put another heavy coat over that and then we will trim it off at the back just like we're doing on the book page one. Because of that thick coat of Mod Podge, this bunny is going to take the longest to dry and I'm actually going to leave him overnight before I come back and trim him off. That Mod Podge gets nice and stiff and allows my sharp X-Acto knife to do a really good job trimming it off from the other side. So first up, I'm just going to take one of these white painted bunnies and put a really cute little buffalo plaid bow on there. On the flip side of this bunny, he's going to get a black and white polka dot ribbon farmhouse carrots I'm going to use the rest of my tea towel I have this black and white buffalo plaid wine bottle holder some black and white twine and we are going to make a really interesting carrot using one of these cones from the Dollar Tree I'm just trimming it down so it's a bit more carrot shaped I'm going to wrap it in a piece of that tea towel and we are just going to pop a little bit of greenery right in the top by shoving it right into the cone I love the way this one came out I did add a little bit of the black and white twine at the top just to kind of pull them all together For this one, I literally cut it corner to corner, glued it together in the shape of a carrot, stuffed it with some stuffing I have from an old pillow, and make sure you get it right down into the point. I didn't do the best job of that. And I'm gonna add a different greenery in the top of this one. I've used all kinds of leftover scrap greenery on these, and I think they look really cool. This one is really different. It's made from some leftover electrical conduit. I actually got this from a friend of mine who's an electrician and I hope he sees that I finally used it. Work really carefully with this. It is sharp. I actually put hot glue on some of the sharp edges so that I wouldn't cut myself. Gloves would not be a bad idea. So all I did was twist it a little bit narrower at the bottom, wider at the top and added some of the Dollar Tree onion glass grass to finish it off. My black painted eggs came out exactly the same with that really neat mottled finish. So we are going to work with that too. I am simply going to use a little bit of the buffalo plaid ribbon on a couple of these. I am going to trim it down and make it a little bit thinner just so it fits around the middle a bit better. And then we're going to have some fun with some buttons and some twine and some Dollar Tree ribbon and all kinds of fun stuff. What do you think of that tea towel bunny with his matching baby bunny and all these great carrots and eggs? I am loving all the textures and patterns. It was so much fun to put this together and look number two is just as striking. I ended up giving the black bunny a really pretty white paper flower. At least I have this collection of Dollarama bunnies. These were two, three, and four dollars respectively based on their sizes. And I am gonna take these guys downstairs and attempt to give them a concrete look. I have a whole bunch of almost empty cans of spray paint and I'm gonna be using um, a glossy gray, a light flat gray, a flat black, and a really flat chalky white. I'm not gonna take you with me because the lighting is atrocious down there but I need to get rid of these beady eyes on these guys. And I'm hoping to come out with something that looks like it's been out in a garden for a long time. So what do you think? Do they have that old concrete look sitting here in their tray full of moss? 
I'm still a little weirded out by his eye, but that could be just me. I picked this guy up at Dollarama because I was inspired by a piece I saw at HomeSense. So I'm gonna use my heat gun and a scraper to get all of this off here. But as I was getting started, I'm thinking two-sided. What do you think? Yeah, two-sided? Me too. My inspiration for this first DIY is this really cute bunny that I saw at HomeSense. I just loved his farmhouse enamel look that he had going on. So we're gonna start by taking this apart. I wanna keep this metal plaque that says Happy Easter intact, and then I wanna get as much of the paper off as I can. Now I've already gone ahead and painted this in my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint and we're going to add that plaque on. Now what I did with the little tacks that came with it is I'm just going to snip the back off of those with my side cutters so I can glue those back down. Super easy. Now using a Sharpie and you can use any kind of marker. I love the Dollar Tree furniture touch up markers for stuff like this, but I couldn't find my black one. We're just gonna use the side of the marker going all around the edge of the bunny to create that beautiful enamel farmhouse look. I like to do it a little bit thicker in a couple of places. So you're gonna see me go back and forth and make a couple of mistakes, which just become where we make it a little bit thicker and a little bit more like the enamel has chipped off. Now on the other side of the bunny, we're going to paint the whole thing white and then I'm going to use this really pretty pink and white gingham. Now once the paint is dry, I'm going to put a generous but even coat of the Mod Podge on this entire side of the bunny. I have already taken apart my napkin. It was two ply, so you want to make sure that you peel off the plain paper backing on those napkins. Now if you have a really good napkin, it could be as many as three ply, so check carefully to make sure all all you have is the printed layer right on top. Now, I mentioned earlier that we're going to try something new today, something that I have never done before. I recently discovered Deirdre over at Our Upcycled Life. If you don't already follow her, hop on over there after you finish watching this video because she has so many great ideas. Now we're going to very carefully lay the napkin right over top here. And one of the tricks that I have seen recently is to use a piece of saran wrap to move it around. I just have it all balled up and this way it slides over the surface as opposed to using your fingers which can tear that really delicate napkin. I hope you're ready for this. In order to trim off all that extra napkin, we are going to use a lighter. That is right, we are. Now you want to make sure you're working in a well-ventilated space as well as windows open and a little bit of water just in case. But what happens is as it reaches the wet edge of the Mod Podge, it stops and it goes out and it gives you just about a perfect edge. To finish off this bunny, I'm gonna go ahead and use these beautiful rose decals I've had in my stash forever. And we're just gonna lay those down in a few places on the bunny just to give him that finished look. Then you can see those roses that I have tucked along the side there. Well, we're gonna make this bunny a really cute tail with those leftover Valentine's roses from Dollar Tree. Once you have your decal in place and you're happy with the positioning, just go ahead, flip it over, and I just used a utility knife to trim that off.
Now everybody needs a cute tail and I had these left over. I actually have tons of these left over. So I'm going to use three of them together to create a really beautiful version of a fluffy bunny tail. And isn't she pretty? Now, typically pink is not something I use in my spring decor, but I just love the way she came out. And you know what? I think she's going over to mom's place. I actually made this matching book stack in another video where I made farmhouse book stacks out of Dollar Tree signs, coasters, books, Dollar Tree crates, a little bit of everything. So I'll make sure I link that video down below so you can check it out. Well, that's a wrap for me today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed every single one of these ideas and that you'll consider hitting the subscribe button so you never miss one of our videos. Thank you so much for stopping by. We are grateful for every single one of our viewers and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.